Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. It's the next uh, uh, session or within the session where we have the pleasure to introduce the guest. But before I do that, I'd like to thank all of you who are here today uh, during this holiday season, a season, as mentioned by the Chair. It is a great sign of solidarity and it is a great sign of love and affection to be here with us. Um, and for a lot of people who are here most of the time, there's some people who are experiencing new things as well. Um, a little while ago, I asked the question, why do we wear hats? So when you get the opportunity during dinner time, you can ask someone close to you. And just in a um, in few words, it is a sign of respect. So we show you respect. Then again, the slogans, all of a sudden, while the speech is happening, someone raises the slogan, Nare Takbir. Then, Allahu Akbar means God is the greatest. And Zindabad means long life. So when you translate, things just become very simple. But leaving that aside, let's get to the guests. Uh, and this discussion will continue over the dinner, I suppose. Um, before I call upon our respected honored guests here for the uh, short speeches, I would like to acknowledge uh, Pandit Sajjan Anand, he is the president of the Hindu Council, and uh, Mr. S. K. Verma, some of the people are seated here, some at the back here, I'm trying to locate as well. Senior Inspector Bob Fitzgerald, he is a very usual visitor right here behind me uh, from the Blacktown Police Station, and Anusha Mustak, uh, Chair of Rakib Tras Forsk uh, Counterterrorism Expert. He's somewhere. And uh, Councillor Moninder, very distinct. Councillor Moninder Singh Black, from Blacktown Council, just right here behind me. He's our great friend, always here. Paul Mill, Senior Vice President of New South Wales Young Labour, somewhere within the crowd. Uh, Dane Beaver, Federal Candidate for Lindsay, Livingston Cherry Pillay, JP Federal Candidate for Chifley. I can see he's there. There you go. Uh, respected Hassan uh, Al Asadi, Chief, uh, Chiefly, uh, sorry, Chair of the organization Iraqi Renaissance. He's, the hand is waving that way. Thank you for coming. And Councillor Rina Jetty from the Bokem Hills Council. I think she's behind here. Thank you for being here. Uh, and I could continue because there's a lot of revered personalities here. There's eight people from the local area, Riverston. Uh, council and one of the speakers will speak to you a little later. There's I think 10 people from the temple down the road. So the list continues. And uh, to the speakers here, the audience is not only these people here, there's another marquee on the other side as well. And some people could be audio visual, visually linked to you as well. Now, there's many messages that has come through, but uh, I won't be reading messages here when there's people live here. But I'll read only two lines from the message from the Prime Minister of the country. Uh, this year's convention is a fitting moment to reaffirm the importance of love for all, hatred for none, uh, and to express gratitude for the blessings we share. In this peaceful land, there's much to consider, and I hope you will do so with passion and purpose. There's a message from Michelle Rowland, who is um, a constant visitor here. Today she has apologized. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community in Australia exemplifies the virtues of respect and honor, living out the message of love for all, hatred for none. This is an important message for all, and I hope this gathering provides an occasion for shared reflection and community spirit. So the messages continue too. Um, I would be requesting and calling upon our speakers now, and it's gonna be a marathon of, I think, eight speakers here today. Uh, or nine speakers here today. And uh, um, if on, on your behalf, I may uh, let the politicians here know and the, some of the religious leaders know that the best speech, the best speech is one where the introduction is close to the conclusion with a very good message within. So let's try our best. And with these words, let me introduce the first speaker, the unformidable, uh, Mayor Stephen Bali is, uh, our friendship with the Mayor of Blacktown and our links with the Blacktown Council is very special. Uh, in the past, this event, Jelsa Salana in 2012, was awarded Community Event of the Year and uh, by the Blacktown Council. Then again, the Mayor may acknowledge this, 
that our Imam, Imam Kausar, was the first ever Imam on the Blacktown Council to deliver the prayer, the, uh, the, the, the invocation prayer during council meeting. And there's another program and project uh, that is designed with the council at, at, as well, which is going to be eventuating on 28th April, and I'll be sending you all the message. So with these words, I'll invite the mayor of the Blacktown City, ladies and gentlemen, welcome him. Thank you very much. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that we're on direct land here today and pay our respects to elders, both past and present, for their custodianship of the land. Given the uh, time constraints, I was going to go through all the other people that you haven't mentioned are on stage here to do acknowledgements, but uh, uh, I suppose I'll just leave that as each person will get up and, and will talk. But I have to acknowledge, obviously, Meninda Singh, my councillor colleague, and my parliamentary colleagues, uh, Prue Carr and Edmund Atala, and all the esteemed people that are here. Uh, from my perspective, hearing these great words from the Imams today is uh, sometimes I think we, uh, and I'm not saying that they've done this, uh, but sometimes we as mankind uh, kind of overcomplicate things, don't we? If you listen closely to the Imams, what they've talked about, really, and when you talk and listen to religious leaders around the place, and this is coming from me as a politician, so be very, very careful. I'm not here to give spiritual guidance in any way. Uh, I think I should be listening a lot more. Uh, but essentially what I work out is that with your faith, with our faith, um, really the two key messages is put your faith in God and put no one else before him. And secondly, love one another. Really, if you think about that, all the other beliefs and rules and uh, recommendations of any faith of anywhere in the world kind of then support those two aspects. If you put God in the centre of your life, uh, therefore you're tired to remove selfishness. You are not the centre of the universe, or I am not the centre. We try to put the community first. That's the whole aspect, really, is to put others before you. If you think that the world revolves around oneself, that's selfishness. And once things go wrong with you, well, who do you have to rely on? And too often, I suppose, that... Um, uh, that when people just base themselves as the centre, uh, things do go wrong and how do you recover? And we see drugs and we see all sorts of problems, that, uh, violence and etc. that happens. But when you look around the world leaders and large community organisations, uh, United Nations etc., when they talk about the community aspect, they always talk about two aspects. If you want to improve any community, whether it's a developing nation or a developed nation like us, Two key aspects is health and education. If you improve the health of the nation, the health of the area, or provide the education, you are giving the tools for people to be healthy and to be able to participate in society. And as we heard from the Imams before, how important is that for us to be active in our society, adding value, supporting each other, and driving forward. You've got to be healthy and you've got to be educated. And we've also known His Holiness, Misra, Mas uh, Masru Ahmed, uh, the worldwide le leader of the Ahmadain Muslim community, and his speeches and his actions always support humanity, putting humanity first. And the two of the main projects that I've seen, especially over the last 15 years, is the building of hospitals and schools around the world that the Ahmadain community has done. The Caliph has built many schools in the developing world. Education and health are two of the most important attributes, as we said. And this allows people to add value, to be healthy, to get involved. But us in the developed world, sometimes we get these messages mixed up. And we've just seen the, the state election and uh, upcoming federal election. If you think about it, sometimes we don't get the right information through the media. We sometimes see and hear that, look at Blacktown Hospital, something like $700 million has been spent on it. Isn't that wonderful? It's almost like giving us a shiny new building. And yet, today in the papers, we see that Blacktown Hospital, and I Prue will probably talk about, uh, or could talk about Nepean Hospital, maybe not today, uh, Edmund talking about, in his lecture at the Mount Druid Hospital, how ridiculous is it that in Blacktown Hospital, that depending on the capacity of the hospital, uh, and what they are doing, that there's 140 vacant nursing positions. 
Regardless of all the other doctors and everybody else, the allied health to support the hospital, 140 vacancies in nursing. It's great giving us a shiny new building, but we need the people. And together with that, you then have a situation where the federal government puts a cap on university places over the last two years. And who doesn't benefit from that is us here in Western Sydney. Where will our children have the opportunity to study if the universities cannot add extra places uh, to study to allow people to do nursing, medicine, allied health, business, teaching, etc.? The fastest growing area, in, uh, or one of the fastest growing areas, not only in New South Wales, but in Australia, is here in Blacktown City. Eight to 10,000 people come in here every single year. Just look across the road <laughs> how many people are coming in. Eight to 10,000. In 12 years' time, there'll be more people living in Blacktown City, one local government area, than the entire state of Tasmania. Are we getting the state Tasmanian budget to support us with the half a million people that we're going to have here? We need to stand up and say to our politicians that we don't want lip service. We want them to support us in health and fill the positions. Why is it that we don't have a university in Blacktown CBD? How ridiculous in the population that's going to be a half a million people that the state and federal government refuse to even talk about it. They talk about Badgerys Creek where you've got a couple of hundred cows and some people out there, but in a city that has 360,000, they don't want to put a university here, but they want to put it out in the middle of nowhere. I'm happy to announce that Council, together with the Australian Catholic University, will be building a university in Blacktown CBD. We will have our university. We need well, we should get support, but even if they don't give us support from the federal and state, we will have a university that will have teaching positions. As we get more schools, we need more teachers. So they'll be te uh, teaching is the main faculty. Health, nursing, allied health will also be a major faculty and business as well as philosophy. So here we have a situation that Blacktown, the local community, together with a major university that expects within five years to have over 5,000 of our local residents to be actually be able to be taught a university. You can live, work, play and study in, the, in uh, the city of Blacktown. So please, together, let's stand up and make sure that we do get our fair share of funding, that we do get looked after as a community of almost a half a million people in the next few years. Just two quick commercial breaks. Uh, we do have um, uh, uh, Bruce Shaw here, the president of the uh, Riverston uh, sub-branch. Anzac Day is coming up on Thursday. If we want to show strength and unity, I know the Armadanes often uh, support Anzac Day marches in the morning. I know it's nice and early, but it'd be good to get involved in your various different local uh, Anzac Day. The city of Blacktown has about four or five marches across our city, shows you how big we are. So please get involved in one of those. Obviously, Riverston will get a, an idea when and where and etc. The other aspect, uh, Mizra um, Sharif, thank you very much for your strong support. And Imam Kassa, what fabulous leader of this community that we have, that when I called out to the 10 mosques across the city of Blacktown to say, can we do something and put on a memorial service? Imam Kassa was one of the first with uh, Mizra. Uh, Sharif to come to us and say, let's do a memorial service. Let's work together with the other mosques, with other faiths, with the various Catholic or the Christian uh, faiths, uh, the Hindu, the Sikhs uh, and the Buddhists. We are coming together next Sunday at 2 p.m. I know you'll be promoting this uh, shortly. And my thanks to uh, local area commander Jeff Philippi, because obviously when you bring together so many people, we need the uh, strong support of police on side at Blacktown International Sports Park on Eastern Road, Rudy Hill. So just look up uh, and the information will come out. Uh, I'd love to see thousands of people. I see over 1,000 a, a people to 2,000 people around here today. If we can shift you all across next week. Multi-faith, it's showing that together that multiculturalism works. It is to recognise the tragedy in New Zealand and that we all have the right to pray in our places of worship without fear that we should be proud to be able to pray in our 
places of worship and that multiculturalism, especially in the city of Blacktown where there's 188 different nationalities, works and is a fantastic beacon of peace for the whole world. So thank you very much. Of course, I forgot to mention to you, the mayor, Mr. Mayor holds two hats. He's the state uh, politician as well, and recently he came, came out victorious with a positive swing. So, um, and also, Mr. Mayor had mentioned that uh, the program on 28, of course, it was a program that was made on the Blacktown Council platform, and amongst some of the Muslim Imams, Imam Kosar is gonna be one of the speakers there as well in front of, uh, um, I think we've given heads up to our commander, local area commander, 8,000 people, do we say? <laughs> so he's, he's ready. Um, next, <laughs> next speaker I'd like to introduce, uh, respected Prue Carr. She's an Australian politician who was elected to the New South Wales Legislative Assembly as a member of Londonderry. And this mosque area falls in her boundaries. She is one of the most frequent visitors here. She looks after the mosque. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's, it's always, always nice to be here. Uh, I'm going to be very, very brief. Uh, firstly, I will start off by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land um, and any Aboriginal uh, and Torres Strait Islander people that might be with us here uh, this afternoon. Uh, I don't need uh, any excuse to come here to Marsden Park. I know that I am personally amongst uh, many friends here. Um, 3,000, I think, isn't it? Um, here uh, for, the, for the convention. Uh, and the reason why I am so, I would say, zealous about supporting the Amadean community here in Western Sydney is not just because obviously it's part of my responsibility to represent this area, it's because I feel so proud of the Australians that you are. Uh, you exemplify everything that is love for all, hatred for none. You live that. I've been with you at Tent Reserve for Clean Up Australia Day where you have c collected all that rubbish. I've heard about the work that you're doing in the community every day, uh, donating blood, donating to charities, living uh, the good words and good deeds and living out your faith every day in our country. All of our country is so much richer because of the contribution of the Amadean community in Australia. And how proud am I that you're here in Marsden Park, that Australia's largest mosque is the Amadean community's mosque here in Marsden Park, set amongst, when you built it, um, you know, the rolling hills and kangaroos hopping around. It certainly has changed in that time. You're in the middle here of unprecedented growth in Western Sydney, like, like Steve Barley said, unprecedented growth. And it gives you an opportunity, I believe, to continue spreading your message of love and peace. And I know that that will mean that this community will grow. Uh, and I pledge my support once more to assisting this community to grow well into the future. Because the more Amadeans we have in this country and in Marsden Park here in Western Sydney, the better society I believe that we will be. I'm so proud to, th you deserve a clap. I'm so proud to be associated with you and to support you. I look forward to continuing um, to speak about you in the parliament, particularly things that happen overseas that, uh, that I believe should not be happening, of course, with the persecution around the world. I will continue to speak up against that and also support the work that you're doing in the community. Thank you very much and congratulations on a great gathering today. Actually, the kangaroos are still hopping around <laughs> because I think uh, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community is so friendly. They haven't gone. One just needs to go to that uh, soccer field at the back there. When we launch our 11 players on the field, there's a whole group of them. Probably they want next match with us. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, there you go. The They're still hopping around, and that's live. So they haven't gone. They're still with us. They are Ahmadis as well. 
Now, Honorable and respected Pruka has taken our human rights issues to the New South Wales Parliament as well, and we are indebted to her, and we've got other projects and programs with her. But uh, saying that, Amadis will not play the victim. We will continue on our mission. Uh, when someone spills blood, we will keep on giving blood. If someone destroys something, we will help build those things. We'll keep on saving humanity. So this work will continue. Uh, but for an MP who deserves her victory last month's election, um, at the state elections, once again, please give Pruka the biggest round of applause. <laughs> and uh, next, our great friend, Ed Atala. He's come here a few times now. Uh, respected Edmund Atala is a member of the Legislative Assembly, a member of Mount Druid, and a member of Australian Labor Party who was re-elected to his seat in 2019 state elections. So they're all bouncing back now. Welcome. Thank you, Merizak. I'll uh, also start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to their elders, past, both past and present. And uh, thank you, Merza, um, for putting us on the short and narrow. I won't disappoint you with a very brief speech. Um, once someone asked me, do you have Twitter? And I said, no. And they said, why not? I said, because I can't express myself in one sentence. <laughs> so uh, I'll try to do the Twitter speech tonight. <laughs> Um, we've, uh, you know, first of all, congratulations on, uh, on holding this annual convention. I think it's a very important convention where you gather uh, nationally and I understand internationally to revive your beliefs and religions and uh, to energise yourselves. And uh, your motto, love for all, hatred for none, and we've heard my colleague Prue Carr taking up the human rights issue um, in your own home country where they actually don't practice that particular motto and uh, where you are persecuted in your own home country. We are very lucky here in Australia because we have numerous different religions and whilst all religions don't have the same belief, they have two ingredients that makes it work for everyone and that is respect and love. If we have those two ingredients in e our everyday dealings, then we will have a very unique situation that doesn't exist in many overseas countries. When people migrate here, they actually take on, as one of your sessions said, love for country is part of your faith. And that's very, very important. And the Amadeus community not only has those words, but they actually do them and deliver them. And uh, from my time when I was a councillor on Blacktown Council, I've, I've seen the Amadeus um, community in action on Clean Up Australia Day, on many community events participating, and they truly get in and be a part of the local Australian community and you should be all proud of that. So congratulations again on this convention and I wish you all the best as uh, you conclude your convention over the next day and I hope that uh, when you go home um, that you have taken something from today that will help you to be a better person than when you came in. So thank you very much. We appreciate your very kind words. If I may elaborate on uh, one of the things mentioned by respected, uh, uh, respected uh, Ad Atala um, is on Australia Cleanup Day. I think um, that there's uh, different states who are here now today, the Victorians and the uh, South Australians and the Queenslanders and all Amethys are here. So on Australia Cleanup Day, if you go to the charts of Australia Cleanup Day, you will find Amethyst have started competing against each other now. Because uh, in terms of donation and uh, volunteers, we try and 
involve our youth, keep them so busy in different projects that they're pulled away from any twisted mentality. So this is our success in that sense too. And on the same token, we contribute to Australia. Now, thank you very much. Uh, if I haven't mentioned, uh, Mr. Edmund Atala, 2015, when he came uh, to fight the state pol uh, election, he came with a landslide victory. In 2019, it was a positive shift. So he needs that round of applause. There you go. Thank you. And uh, let me introduce you of a very dear friend, uh, Superintendent Jeff Filippi. What can I say about respected uh, LEC commander, Superintendent? His own officers, when they visit us, tell us that he's a man of wisdom, calm and collected. Uh, and one has to be because what people read in the headlines, this is his statement in one of the headlines, the department live and breathe it every day. It sounds familiar with the police department also, uh, both sitting at the back there too. So please welcome the superintendent, Jeff Filippi, a commander serving the local community. Thank you for those kind words, Mirza. I really appreciate you saying that, on, uh, particularly the comments of the troops who uh, are dedicated to serving the whole community. In, within the Blacktown LGA. Uh, and uh, hopefully the experiences you have, if you have any with them, are that they're professional and dedicated officers. In fact, some of our officers are part of your, um, of the Amadean community and uh, speak very highly of uh, the community. Um, and uh, I'd just like to say on behalf of uh, just a little by way of background, Bob Fitzgerald, who's here, is one of the most, one of the longest serving police officers within this LGA. He uh, is dedicated to his family and to service of this community. And between us, we have about just shy of 70 years policing experience. Um, and hopefully, uh, we've made an impression over the last five to 10 years within this uh, within this LGA in relation to crime statistics. What I would like to, um, to highlight is that when I first came here, and I've only been here for five years, not like Bob who's been here for about 50, um, we, I drove past this mosque and uh, I noticed a couple of things. So if we're talking about an inclusive congregation and an inclusive society, I notice that everybody is welcome. A sign is out there, not discriminating and without fear for what they might bring, that you want to share your faith, your religion, your beliefs with the community. And that's outstanding for a congregation of, uh, of Islamic people and of uh, Muslim fa faith to do that, particularly given some of the, the things we've seen and uh, most recently in New Zealand, um, but certainly the um, white supremacist, uh, white supremacists, sorry, who uh, have made it quite clear and, and really over the years, not many incidents, but of the various mosques and uh, Islamic schools in the area that have suffered some fear, that have suffered, you know, pig's heads being thrown into their um, uh, premises and, you know, vile words said to them in shopping centres and the like. But you still, still say, and I know everyone's probably quoted it, but love for all and hatred for none. And the times I've been here, over the years, I have to say that um, I have no doubt in your belief that, that that's what you stand for. For this community, whoever they may be and wherever they may come from. Um, you know, uh, after New Zealand, uh,
there was a real ripple effect. And I've got to say, notwithstanding my experience in and my service to the community and the things I've seen over the years in different phases of duties, I found it quite rattling that it could come this close to home. It made me reflect too on the, um, the disconnect with some of society and uh, I'd have to say, just in summary of this component of what I wanted to say, is that more people should take up the offer that all are welcome and come in here and see this community and what they deliver and, and how respectful you are and peaceful and how uh, invested in our local community you are. And they would have a different view immediately. On the times I've come here and listened to the, um, the speeches, particularly of the Imams, and mingled with the community, it gives me great confidence in the future and your contribution to the community and, and the wider acceptance of uh, you as Australian citizens contributing to Australia and co contributing to a service in Australia and, um, and respect for the greater community. They should see, they should be coming in here to see that you, you're welcoming with open arms. Um, just, as, just in closing, I want to say that policing is an interesting business, a sad business sometimes, and a confronting business. And sometimes we have to um, use force. It's not our first option, but it's something we need to do. But um, I think that, you know, what we're about is the same, you know, what our, our modern policing is based on is creating a peaceful community. And uh, so I think the values you share, and I've learned from you when I come here and listen to you, and have an overwhelming feeling of calmness being here, and my colleagues who've seen me, or heard me give many speeches, and I usually read them, uh, would know that um, sense a difference, if not over articulate, but certainly in uh, being prepared to talk without notes and to speak from the heart. And I just thank you for welcoming us and uh, our representatives here today, Bob and myself, uh, both senior officers within the Blacktown LGA, but um, for welcoming our troops. And they have spoken to me about the warm reception they get when they pull up in the truck and they're offered a drink and uh, some sustenance, but more than that, good humour and acceptance from this local community. And I'm indebted to you for feeling that way about our people. So in closing, thanks again for having us here. I feel humbled, personally feel humbled by the invitation and the acceptance. But could I just say in closing, and I should have said in opening, the Commissioner of Police received your um, invitation to attend here today. Um, he is actually in New Guinea, walking the Kokoda Trail as we speak, and he's doing that to support Police Legacy. And Police Legacy is an organisation uh, that looks after the families of police who've been killed on duty. So that includes the children, wives, husbands, children, and the wider families. And it's, uh, it also supports police who were injured on duty and can no longer perform duty, have had to retire from the New South Wales Police Force. So I just say that in passing because it wasn't a whim or just a one-liner that he wanted passed on. He wanted me to uh, say to you that he would be proud to come here and speak to you. Um, and hopefully we can renew that, uh, that uh, invitation next year for this event. And um, that one of the uh, deputies and, or the commissioner could attend. So just in closing, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Long live. I've translated that for you. So um, may I also acknowledge publicly today, whenever things happen on different parts of the world, 
the Madrid police and the Blacktown police and other police who are around here, they're always here. They show their presence. When this atrocity, this, um, let's not call it, this terror attack happened in New Zealand, um, during the day, we had police visiting us. During the Magri prayer, we had police visiting us. During the Isha prayer, we had police visiting us. They had parked their uh, vehicles around here to show their presence. So we cannot, we're indebted to the uh, Mandarin police station here. Their presence at the mosque was seen by the public, basically. So please give Jeff and Bob and all the men in blue today the biggest round of applause. <laughs> now, I have much pleasure in inviting our very respected dear friend, Bruce Shaw. Uh, he had come here on Remembrance Day and then had made a plan with us, so, which is going to be eventuating on Anzac Day. Uh, he is a Vietnam veteran being conscripted into the army in 1968, and then he lived other part of his life, and now he is the president of RSL sub-branch at Riverston. A um, couple of, uh, sorry, four of our delegates, we had a meeting at RSL just last week, so we've got some plans to execute. Please. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to make it uh, short and sweet because uh, I think you all want to get to dinner. <laughs> I am very honoured to be here today, as are my other three uh, friends from the sub-branch. We've been invited to join you on this very special weekend, and we were more than honoured to come here. Only for this gentleman next to me, I wouldn't be here. He's been uh, instrumental in us coming together. We uh, have our Anzac Day service this Thursday, starting at 6 o'clock in front of the Cenotaph at Riverston Railway Station. And for the first time, I believe, in New South Wales, uh, Iman Kaiser is going to be saying a prayer and also reading a, uh, the dedication to Australia, which is, I believe is the first ever in a RSL sub-branch um, memorial service. It may even be in Australia, but uh, we're very proud of the fact that he's going to be there. I'd just like to say a couple of things. I'm very proud to be Australian. What, when I look out on this congregation here, I really hope in my heart that you stand up and say you're Australian. Whether you immigrated here or whether you are born here, one of the greatest things we can have is to live in this country. We have simple things and we have a couple of politicians here today and I'm not pushing their barrow but if you're sick the government will look after you. If you don't have a job they'll help you. You can go into the street today and speak your mind and nobody's going to drag you off to jail. This is a great, great country and I just want you to remember that. Thank you. hope that was good. <laughs> okay, I said I was going to be short and sweet. That's all I'm going to say, but please, on Thursday, our service starts at 6am in front of the Cenotaph. You are all welcome. We're going to have a fair contingent from the mosque, um, and come and see your imam say a prayer, and uh, it'll be a, a first for everybody, and, and we're very proud that he's going to do that. So thank you again, and thank you again for inviting us. Thank you. Respected Bruce has got his own style. Keeping it short, he's won your heart, not being a hurdle to dinner to be served soon. Uh, let's have uh, Reverend Bill Cruz, who is the founder and CEO of the Exotus Foundation uh, and the Bill Cruz Charitable Trust. And he has had numerous awards coming to him. Uh, Bill Cruz has broadcast his top rating Sunday night radio program since 2002. Let's hear from him. Thank you, thank you. A little while ago in the Middle East, they found a mass grave and it was from the 12th or 13th century and in it were the bones of Christian soldiers and Muslim soldiers and they were all muddled up together, 
all muddled together. And then somebody recognised that the Christian soldiers all had big swords and so the bones that were broken were broken with big things. The Muslim soldiers had scimitars and the bones were cut. But they were all dead together and all the bones mingled together. And the bones became one. And the cries of the mothers, of the Muslim mothers and the Christian mothers, became one. We talk a lot about love. You know, it's all around the walls. Love, love. But unless you do love, it's a waste of time. And doing love is hard. It's very hard. Because it means you have to remove all the hatred from in your heart. And that is very, very hard. And we see what happens when we don't remove the hate. We see it in, in Christchurch in New Zealand. We see it in France with, with the, the Bataclan. We see when we don't work on ourselves to remove the hate from our hearts, to actually do loving kindness that we all talk about, until we do it, we are clanging gongs. There's a part in my church service I use which is written by the Muslim poet Rumi. It goes, come, come, whoever you are. It doesn't matter if you're an unbeliever and it doesn't matter if you've fallen a thousand times. Come, come, whoever you are, for this is not the door of hopelessness. Come just as you are. And there's a Christian hymn which says, come as you are, that's how I love you. Love transcends all, transcends everything but it's hard to do. And unless you do it, you're just a clanging gong for your religion. So the thing that I just want to leave with you today is do the love, because in doing the love, a whole new world can develop. And armies and buildings and all of those things end up dust. But love is like the wind and it lives forever. Thank you. Amen. Now, Reverend Bill Cruz has mentioned about love, loving each other, understanding each other. And uh, to the visitors here today, if you'd be living with one thing today, would be please, it would be our honor to leave with those words at the back there. Love for all, hatred for none. That is the motto of the community. That is, when we say motto of the community, it belongs to everyone, especially it's the need of the hour uh, in this time and age. So, love for all, hatred for none. Let's repeat. Love for all, hatred for none. Love for all, hatred for none. With these words, I want to invite our National Secretary. He's got a very important message to be related to, to you all. And then after which uh, is um, our chairperson's going to lead us into a concluding prayer. And uh, when the session is uh, concluded, then uh, I think we'll conclude the session. There won't be messages. Uh, basically, we're doing prayers after this. Okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Peace be upon you all. Uh, it's an important announcement. Um, on behalf of our very dear and respected uh, Amir Sahib, Imam Inamul Haq Kosar, I would like to humbly apologize to all of our guests who are here today uh, that he could not host you. He had been sick six since yesterday, and as per doctor's advice, he was taken to hospital this morning, uh, and he has to stay there till Tuesday uh, for some mandatory tests. So that's why he's not here today. He has sent his greetings, salam and peace to all of you, and uh, he has request to remember him in your prayers. May God give him and bless him with complete health. Uh, 
Now, I would like to request after the conclusion of uh, this session, all guests are requested to go to the exhibition and bookstall marquee, uh, which is next to our mosque and next to the minaret. And uh, from the marquee, please join us for the dinner. While rest of the members, they can go to the dinner marquee. Jazakumullah. And after dinner, we will offer our prayers at uh, 7.30, inshallah. Jazakumullah. So before we go. So before we conclude, uh, please pray for the quick recovery of Ami Sahib, Imam Qasir Sahib. And also please remember all those who have been uh, victims of uncanny acts of some of our fellow human beings who have left, who have lost touch with the reality and started treating people of other faith without respect. And also remember our sick and frail members who couldn't attend the gathering. So uh, we shall offer silent prayer. So our tradition is a bit that we, we raise hands, but you are free to uh, supplicate in your own way. So please join me in prayer. Amen. Um,